Uh, welcome to uh, the numerical simulations workshop by Skilllink. And most of you know us from this Facebook ad that you clicked on and then registered for this workshop. So Skilllink is an e-learning company that focuses on providing mechanical engineering courses. We are based out uh, here in Chennai and uh, we do have an office in Wisconsin, USA. What are we going to be looking at today? So primarily, I'm going to be talking about the importance of MATLAB and how how useful is it if you want to say, uh, you know, do research work or do additional projects while you're still an undergraduate, uh, still you are an undergraduate student, or if you're a working professional, how you can use MATLAB, or if you're interested in pursuing your master's in US or UK, how or any other country, how can you use MATLAB? So that is kind of the main uh, point here. And as and when I give you examples, I'll be talking about like, why are we learning this type of an example? Where is it that you will find an example like that? And for that, I, I actually planned out a live demo. So first, you know, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with MATLAB. So I'll be giving like a basic usage demo where I'll talk about MATLAB, what you can use it for, and like, how can you use MATLAB from what you learned today? I think that is the biggest takeaway. Uh, hopefully by the end of today's workshop, you learn some commands which you can put in place in your uh, day-to-day -day, day -day learnings and start using the tool right away, okay? And then we'll slowly, uh, you know, start solving different types of problems. Uh, since most of you are mechanical aerospace or automotive engineer, you know, we'll, we'll basically look at some math problems. And when we say math problems, uh, we are basically learning mathematical concepts and how that can be solved using computer programming. And as I do that, I'll be explaining about the importance of solving these type of problems with respect to the industry. And then we jump on to uh, building a simple simulator. Basically, we'll look at an auto cycle simulator that generates a PV diagram automatically. And then how you can modify this program to implement your own combustion models, which is an amazing project for a final year student. Then we'll look at a rank and cycle simulator. If you, And uh, I might skip that a little bit, depending on how much time we have. And then we'll also show you um, a robotic arm simulator. Like this basically kind of shows a lot of the capabilities that MATLAB has to offer. So before we move forward, I would like to ask one question just to make sure that everyone understands where the chat box is and understands how to comment. So I hope you can all see my screen. Now, if you're uh, watching this through a mobile device, then things might seem very small uh, because we typically want students to join these type of presentations from their laptop. So if you're using a mobile device, then I'm quite confident that this is going to look super small. The text is going to be even more smaller. If you're watching it on a laptop, make sure it's on full screen so that you can see what's going on. All right. So this right here is MATLAB. First of all, MATLAB is a programming language. And this is something that is being used by a lot of companies in India, outside India, and by a lot of research organizations. Why? MATLAB is super simple to use. I'm pretty sure you have all learned C or C++, right? So most of you commented that you have done some kind of programming, most likely I've learned C or C++. And you might have struggled through the lab exercises where you have to write programs for matrix multiplication and things like that, right? So MATLAB makes it very, very easy. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is some basic usage. This will help you understand how MATLAB works. And in fact, if you're taking notes, write down some of the commands that I'm talking about, which you can actually use today. And from tomorrow, if you're studying subjects like uh, finite element analysis, if you're studying subject like thermodynamics, your life is going to be very much more easier. All right. So this is the graphical user interface of MATLAB. C program does not have one. MATLAB has one. That's the primary uh, difference. So here, this right here is a command window. So the command window is basically like a calculator. So for example, if you basically do five plus four, it's going to spit out nine, right? So fairly straightforward. You can use command window right today. Like also multiplication, division, uh, if you want to use log, natural log, that's fine. Exponential, that works very well, right? So MATLAB is pretty neat at that. But the power of MATLAB comes from the fact that it can handle matrices. So for example, let us say that I have an array called density, right? I can just say that the density is 100, 200, 300, and 400, right? Now, volume, I'm going to create another array for called volume, right? So I'm going to say that volume is 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2, right? I'm just randomly typing in those values. So now uh, let us say that I need to calculate mass. So density is nothing but mass by volume. 
So mass is going to be density times volume, right? So I can create a new variable called mass. I can just say that that is nothing but density multiplied by volume. Now, when we do the multiplication sign, I need to put a small dot in front. I'll explain to you what this is. But if you do that, almost immediately you get the mass values for all the four, four, four data points. Now, remember, if you do something like this in C, you have to use a for loop. In MATLAB, you don't have to. Now, here's where things get even more uh, easy. In MATLAB, you can create arrays quite easily. So for example, let us say that I need to create a random volume array. I can use the rand command. I can generate 10 random values just like that. All right. Very, very powerful. Doing this in C program requires a lot of time. And one thing that you need to understand is MATLAB is an interpreted language, meaning you don't have to compile it. If you guys remember uh, your C programming days, you write a C program, you need to first compile it. It creates an object file, it then execute it, right? It's kind of a two-step process. So whenever you make a change, you kind of have to do this entirely. But with respect to MATLAB, no, you can. it's an interpreted language, meaning as you type it, things are getting compiled, things are getting uh, run by the processor. So fairly straightforward. So I have my volume array.